welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church. The service this morning begins on page 355 of the prayer book, or you may find a, a link to it online at the All Saints website. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, highest and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, the heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may be by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please say together Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 16 through 22, and 45. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. 
They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as the master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. This hymn this morning is Precious Lord, Take My Hand, found in the Wonder, Love, and Praise hymnal, page 800. <laughs>
In church, we often talk about the call that God has put before us, the great commission that Jesus gives to his followers. We speak of our responsibility to go into the world and evangelize. And this lesson from Romans that we just heard tells us why this work is so very important. Clearly, logically, Paul reminds people, he reminds Rome that faith and righteousness and all the beautiful gifts of God are gifts that need to be shared, that people need to know so they can accept them. And that, he says, is our job. We are to bring the good news. Now, we know statistically that far more people are likely to find faith to join a church, come to a service from a personal invitation than anything else, from us going out and showing them the light and inviting them to find more for themselves. We remind you of that often, especially during stewardship time, but that is not necessarily what is important in terms of just looking for new pledges. Rather, it is important that we are always serving as beacons of light to draw as many people in as we may. The light is needed by all, but those who do not know it might never learn if that good news is not proclaimed and brought and shared. That is our job as Christians, as people of faith, plain and simple. Earlier this week, one of those lights on my dashboard kept blinking on and off, and so I thought I should probably take my car in. Now, there was nothing really wrong. Basically, the car just needed an oil change and a fluid top off, regular maintenance, that kind of regular maintenance that keeps the car running well for a long time. Now, that's kind of a regular part of life, right? We take cars in for oil change, we take, um, we mow the lawn regularly, we clean the lint from the dryer tubing, all sorts of things that are basically kind of regular maintenance. But that kind of maintenance is not limited just to things or tools. So that we may serve as the beautiful feet that bring good news, as Paul says, our own faith must be in good shape and that, in and of itself, requires regular maintenance as well. It's very difficult for us to proclaim hope and light if we get so clouded up that we lack it or cannot see it. So I think this sense of an oil change for your car also being a maintenance check for your soul is something that we need to think about. And I will admit that my husband was the one who was telling me, how do you, or he asked me, you know, what are some ways that we would do that? What is the oil change of our faith? So I'm going to offer three of them to you today. And when I come back to it at the end, it's because we need to build this up. Um, we'll talk more about that. But the first thing I want to, to suggest for how we maintain our light and life and our message is that we are to practice something called soul care. And the maintenance part of that is checking in to see if what has helped before still helps now. So you all have probably heard about something called self-care. It's very popular right now in culture, and it's something that's important in a world that is full of overcommitted people and whatnot. Taking a moment for yourself is a good thing. Now, people often talk about self-care as getting a manicure or having a massage or taking a nap, a favorite Sunday activity in our household. And all of that is fine, but I'm talking about something a little bit different, something a little deeper. Soul care is not just that quick fix to take the edge off, rather it is intentional and something that develops in a lot of different ways for different people. It's not asking yourself how to have a break, but instead asking what feeds or rejuvenates or maintains me at my core. Now, hopefully we all kind of know that. We have a sense of what we do that makes our souls sing and invites light to grow within us. The maintenance part includes getting a checkup on that, thinking about the practices that you've been doing and are they still feeding you? Do you need to do something else? Has this become just rote? There are so many different ways we can build our souls with prayer and meditation simply by being kind to people. Sometimes it's avoiding social media or fixing things that we've done wrong. The list goes on and on, 
but we need to check in on what we think our defaults are to see if they're still feeding us. The next thing that I think we do for maintenance is read. Just like I might read the manual to see which little light is flashing on and off, I encourage everyone to read frequently and to use that as a checkpoint within yourself. Now, of course, here we are in church, so I'm going to say read the Bible. And indeed, the scripture is a good and great source of maintenance. It reminds us that everything comes from within. If you read 2 Timothy, you'll see all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. And the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In Scripture, we have a chance to notice different parts of our souls that may be darker or lighter, and to bring everything out, to let it grow up. We can find clarity and community and life within. Now, in addition to that, I also think it's good to read other things, to learn things and grow and find new loves and dreams, whether it's a book that is one of those um, easy murder mysteries that you grab at the airport, or it is a critical study in ethics. Whatever it is, what makes your soul jump? That is maintaining your soul. And then the third thing, so I can't change my, well, I can change my oil by myself, but it is not a pretty thing, and it's been a while since I've done it. So I went and to the professionals and asked for help. Asking for help is a critical part of maintaining our souls. We need to ask for help. We need to ask for God. In today's gospel lesson, Peter started off toward Jesus. He's walking on the water just like Jesus just did. And then partway there, he got scared. And he started sinking. And what did he do? He gave up self-reliance and he asked Jesus for help. We all need a little help sometimes. We are told over and over to rely on God, not to seek isolation or strength only from within. We're reminded that we cannot fully grow or heal or hope without asking for help. And practicing this, practicing this, practicing this in small ways, is the maintenance that we do so that when the big things come along, we can ask for the help that is needed. We know how. We're ready. So three simple ways to think about maintaining spiritual balance, about checkups for them, is to check in on self-care, to read scripture and other things, and to ask for help regularly. Now, the reason I bring this all up is because I know that this week, many of the schools in the area, this week and next, are going to resume in-person classes in the midst of a pretty serious pandemic. And it's a source of great stress and great fear for many. Now, in addition to that, I think great grief surrounds us. Yes, we are experiencing a lot of death and change that is normal parts of grief, but also, as we come to the end of the summer, we are still facing a world that doesn't look normal to us. We are still in pandemic life. And the end of ignorant bliss is a piece of that grief. There's no way to overcome that fear. There's no way to jump out there if our souls are not ready and our spiritual life turned up. Furthermore, there's no way to be able to share that with other people if our spiritual life is not tuned up. So, soul care, reading, and asking for help are important. But there's one more thing. Now, the place where I change my oil also offers a bonus car wash at the end, so when the car comes back to me, it's nice and shiny and clean. And that happens so like once every six months because they wash my car when I get my oil change. That bonus opportunity of, of being washed and shiny and fresh and new as a result of this ongoing maintenance is also open to us in our hearts and minds and souls. When we come together physically or virtually to worship, we're invited into that regular rejuvenation and maintenance. We are um, 
often called to affirm our baptism, as we did last night when we welcomed Silas and Henry into the body of Christ. I will say for me, music does this, communal confession and absolution for some. Have you noticed that when you really mean it, when you take a moment during that pause to actually think about what you're confessing, there's a greater chance of emerging refreshed. We are called to bring the good news to a world that desperately needs it. So I invite you all to take this time, take time this week, to ponder the ways that we maintain our souls so that we may bring that love and that hope to those who do not know it in a time of Please join in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, your God from God, light from light, the true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in your book. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they, they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by
by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The hymn is, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, page 490 in the hymnal, verses 1 and 3. be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.